Right. Hello everyone. This is the deck I got third place at the Fort Worth Agov Regional. It was Bestial Runic, as you can see. I forget how many players it was, probably around 400, maybe maybe 500. I, I don't remember. But, so I ended up, I guess to give a little bit of background, I picked up this deck about Three or four weeks before the regional, I had seen a a uh, list that won. I believe it was a it was a California regional. I think it was either California or Vegas. I don't quite remember, but I saw a Bestial Runic deck that uh, did really well, and I was like, you know, I like Bestials. I like control decks. This looks like right up my alley. So go ahead, and start playing it, do a bunch of testing, and lo and behold. <laughs> Joshua Schmidt wins the YCS with it. That, that was very, that was like a, a sad and happy moment for me because I go from like, oh, I, I, have, I have this cool unknown deck that I did, uh, that I'm doing really well with. But then it, it's no longer unknown and I'm getting called a net decker, which is really sad, right? It always feels uh, bad for that. Like if you see in my Bortle profile, I get, I got flamed a lot, but that's okay. Anyways, so I wanted to go a little bit more in depth in this one uh, as opposed to in the other profile I did for this one, which again, you can go find if you just search my name and this your runic. But uh, this was the deck that I took to the event. It was nine rounds. My only loss was round, uh, round eight against uh, Triff, who was playing Manadium, like a Manadium pile deck. He's probably got profiles on his channel. And uh, that one was really unfortunate, too, because I... So game one, I, he goes first, makes an unbreakable board, I lose. Game two, I go first. Uh, I actually don't play a single Runic card in the second game. I was just playing with Bestials, so I actually OTK him on turn three, because I double draw uh, for his call by. And then game three, I break his whole board. He has... Not he has some follow up, not the greatest, and I'm in a spot where I have fountain and I have like uh, one card in hand which is dead, like it's a quem or something. And I go for triage to draw, and if I draw a runic spell, I have two runics in graveyard, and then I can trigger fountain, and the game's just over because I'm drawing three, and then he can't play because I have bound in plus a full hand for his turn plus a uh, synchros, but. We rip, it was like, I don't remember. It, it was something dead. It might have been a uh, regained or something. I don't remember. But anyways, we missed the, uh, we we drew dead. So ended up losing that one and uh, won the one mile brown nine, which is very funny because it was against Runic Stun. Uh, but anyway, so this is the deck. Uh, it's pretty similar to the list that I found in Vegas. Uh, so the main differences, and I'm going to talk about those real quick, is I found that duality was not very good in the deck, in my opinion. And the reason being is in all my testing, so you, duality feels like it's most useful as discard fodder for Hugin. It's a discard for Hugin that recycles cards and draws a card. It, just from my testing. And the, the biggest issue with that is the only darks you really have access to are your biz steals and then like extra decks so let's say you draw a full runic hand or even like just runic plus like quems and stuff and like the duality just isn't doing anything like the card's just straight dead um whereas like a tactics like this card is so good going second uh because not only do you make really good use of the steals right because steel plus any runic goes in the sp and just out this card is crazy, right? Um, but also, I mean, drawing two is really good. I'd rather draw two cards than one card, right? Um, something else that tended to be really good was once you, uh, <clears throat> so you can play around the draws, right? By using your runics and standby phase or draw phase to add fountain. And then you go main phase, you get your one fountain draw, and then they draw you. And then you say, okay. I'm going to attack this, look at your hand. You have, you start your turn with three cards, one for turn, and I resolved to found and draw three, because that was my only search. <laughs> right? um, I liked this card a lot. <laughs> I'm actually still playing this right now. Uh, 
This is why I didn't play duality. Also, if you don't play duality, you can see your extra deck is a lot more free. And this is just something I want to call out now because I thought it was really interesting. Is Joshua Schmidt made a video um, a week ago, I want to say, on his updates to this deck. And I, his extra deck is the exact same as mine was at this event. I, uh, well, he said it will be once he cuts to Audi, which he didn't like. Anyways, uh, I'm going to talk more about my list. So, Quem plus Cartesia was my choice at the time. Uh, two Cartesia was fine, I guess. Uh, honestly, I think the main deck was fine. There wasn't really much I would change at, at the time. At the time. Things have changed, but I'll talk about them in my next video where I... Um, at a different event but th this was great i played against uh, a few unchains which like this card is your god card against like you can use it on both their turn and your turn and then it gives you protection against pretty much every unchained interaction right so this card was very good in that format it would help you draw for one of your high impact cards and it would protect your plays during your turn right like imperm on hugan you can now negate right Plus, uh, cycling any any dead multiple. But, uh, so, for the rest of the side deck, uh, I mean, Drell's, uh, Drell Nibiru was just for the big combo decks. Like, uh, Minadium, which I did play against. Against some of the, the more combo-y stuff again, like this one in versus, versus Unchained, it was like these, these, uh, six. And then I was like taking out, uh, it really depended, but it was a lot of times it was like a Cartesia, a regain when I'm going second. And then I would take out like a bad runic, and that's like three spots. And then sometimes it would be like, okay, four, or like in, in Unchained case, I just took out these six, right? Like Ashes, it, it can be high impact against that deck, but it's not super crazy. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll talk a tiny little bit about the extra deck, though I think this is almost standard at this point for Bistio Runic. But it was like the normal four Runic cards, right? The two Hugin, one Jerry, one Slepner. Ah, okay, sorry. This is what it was. Um, I, I was lying. There it is. I was playing one of this card. But... Uh, yeah, so then we have Floor, Dispatter, like, pretty much the Synchro Tens are standardized as well. I was playing Legati up. This was actually, this was actually really good. It's, it has a lot of applications in the deck, right? You get the draw, so it makes the hands where you have to Lubellion and you can't go into, like, it, it just makes hands that have Lubellion plus a Floating Tuner a lot better you get a draw and then this card just randomly has like a decent effect right like it also protects your sp from just getting run over and then going second it also destroys a card so i mean this card was really good uh, i think this one's pretty common now in the deck but at the time i hadn't seen anybody else play it other than that the big the big change for me was again i was playing two sp which i hadn't seen other people do at the time the reason being is there's a, because you never, I, I, I'm not going to say you never have a battle phase, but because you don't have a battle phase super often, or at least you don't have a battle phase when you're still grinding out your opponent. Once you get to the point where the game is really simplified and you can just win the game with your synchros, right, then you, then you can actually start going in for attacks. But until you get to that point, there comes a point where you just like, you need graveyard interaction, right? Like, that's the biggest thing I've noticed with this deck. Is it's really good at dealing things that are on the field. It's really bad with dealing non-dark things that are in the graveyard. So, the best thing about Little Knight is not actually banishing stuff on the field. It's hitting graveyard cards. <laughs> because, again, your engine is good at dealing with field cards. This deals with everything else. <laughs> And then you can end on it, and it'll force a battle phase. And forcing a battle phase is so good, because that means you're not dying that turn, and your deck is very good when you're not dying. So you say, okay, they attack over a little night. Maybe phase two. I'm not dead. Awesome. 
But anyways, uh, something fun with this card that comes up sometimes is you can uh, overlay this for like a dead baron or put it on top of like another bestial and then you can bounce back your own Lubalion and then use Lubalion add mag, right? Like stuff like that, like Captain versus an Unchained player. This card's really under... I say it's underrated. Of course it's good in Runic, but there, in my opinion, there are a lot of times going into this is just better than going into Baron, even on turn one. Or even better than going into Dispatter. Like, Dispatter is good in this deck, but it's not... crazy. I think, like, of the impact level of the Synchro 10s, it's like... It, this pattern is solely for the, the sake that you get the recursion on your Banished. And then, and then, uh, Chang Yin, and then Baron, and then finally, like, uh, the Chaos Angel very rarely gets made, in my experience. Yeah, very, very rarely gets made, and when it does get made, it's like, I, I have this field state where I have Lubellion plus a Hugen, and then, like, a Runic card in hand and a Fountain that I haven't used. And then I'm like, okay, I'll go Lubellion plus Hugin for Chaos Angel, banish a card, and then say, okay, I need the trigger fountain, <laughs> so we'll just use an, uh, another Runic, someone like a Gary or another Hugin, it doesn't really matter, go into SP with Chaos Angel plus that, and then banish another card, right? Um, one other thing that came up a few times that isn't super immediately uh, obvious is Little Light can target itself. <laughs> so, yeah, it can target one card on the field or graveyard. It can target itself, and it can target cards in your graveyard, right? Like, that, that's, like, pretty, pretty important because there are times where this card, you have two monsters in the field that you cannot make anything with besides, like, a Little Knight. Like, I don't know, you, you, go, you get to a weird state where you have, like, Jerry plus, I don't know. Where I'm just giving, like, a crazy example. Jerry plus the Bestial Lubellion, right? And instead of going for... And then, like, you put a Regain on your field, and you still need to resolve your Fountain Draw. Or, again, for whatever reason, that this had, did happen. Uh, and then you summon SP, and then you SP banish itself, and you say, okay, regain effect, put SP back, draw one, and now my EMZ is cleared, right? Uh, so this was pretty good for clearing, clearing EMZ. But anyways, so yeah, that, that's mostly the deck. Uh, like I said, this one is pretty similar to the one I found in Vegas, or Vegas, or LA, or wherever it was. Um, I think my current list is pretty different which you will see when i upload that video so yeah thanks for watching this was my third place deck profile uh, have a good one